I am here with Diddy Kong, Steve Amable, otherwise known as Aim Able, as um, <laughs> many yeah. typos will suggest. Angela. How are we doing? <laughs> so, Mr. Steve. Yes, man. First request, please stop fighting my friends. You fought quite a few of my oh, friends so really? far. You fought, <laughs> you fought, what was it, um, Josh Abraham, yeah. you fought Chase Moore, yeah. you fought um, <laughs> Rick Savarancho and all them well, guys. Uh, well, it seems like I win against all your friends, so right. more the better. <laughs> this is it. So, before we get into all the MMA stuff, I stumbled onto something on your Instagram, and I want to go into that real quick. Yeah. So, Ninja Warrior, talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How did that go? Um, I got to. Do, I went to like the. So you apply online, and they they take you to like a like a little audition sort of thing. It's just like a, a picking process. Um, it's just a. It was just at a gym in London. They do a few little like uh, hang challenges and like jumping up a wall. Nothing like the Ninja Warrior course or anything like that. It was a CrossFit gym, um, and it like the the obstacles were like. Like really good, I've done really good, but the interview, I'm crappy interview. So obviously they like a bit of a character on the show and stuff, but yeah, that that that's not me. I'm sort of not very interviewable. It, although these seem to come across all right, but I was under I was under pressure and it got to me and uh, <laughs> it was pretty crap. But oh well, it didn't get on there. I'm trying to get on. Um, trying to reply for SAS who dares wins at the minute. So, oh, yeah, I've, I've I've applied for quite a few. I've applied for like the island before Bear Grylls. I wanted to go on that. Um, didn't get through to that. Um, and now the SAS who does wins. So, fingers crossed. I'd love to do that and see what see how it goes. Oh, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Now, if you go on any quiz show or any like game show, what would it be? None at the minute, because if you ask, the, we're doing um, B, BKK quiz nights every Saturday. Um, I've come. I think we've. We've done three, and I've come last in every single one at the minute. Now, so it's not, it's not that brings good. me to one of my um, Instagram questions I yes. had. So, what's this about the BKK um, Bake Off? He said, who is the BKK Bake Off champ, and how is your general knowledge holding up over uh, lockdown? Is that Corey? <laughs> it is indeed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think she's winning the Bake Off at the minute, because I'm, I've been uh, told by the wife that I need to cut down on the baking. Oh. Just because uh, I'm starting, to, I'm starting to become a feeder, and it's not good. Um, so yeah, I've slowed down on the baking. I haven't baked for I don't know now, probably enough four weeks since like the start of lockdown. So I think she's winning that. And like I just said, I'm last in the quiz at the moment, but I'm succeeding at something. I'm coming last. I got my trophy for last. So everyone loves an underdog. Exactly. It's all good. Uh, last week I was first three rounds. I was doing good. I was level, and then it just dropped off, and I come bottom so got up championship rounds number bring it one back. on Saturday so and uh, I'm going to pull it out of the bag I think because this unless they lift the lockdown this could be the last one so fingers crossed I'm, I'm coming in strong this week I'm cheating that's all it, oh, that's what I think everyone else is doing they're all playing in teams I'm playing on my own so they're doubling my score so if they take their partners away they'll be on the same score as me so technically we're, we're level pegging at the minute so in hindsight, you could have like a camp in preparation for this. You could have got like all your um camp sort of get all your bacon in. Exactly. Always. They're they're all they're asking questions about all Marvel and bloody Game of Thrones and I don't watch any of that T V series and so I think they're just cheating to make me look bad. That's all it is. Well that's it, mate. Anything to bring them down to your their level, exactly. isn't it? Now you've been a pro since twenty twelve. How have you kept so like <laughs> focused and like interested since like, you know? Been in it like eight years so far. Uh, as a pro, yeah, I started when I was, I think this would be my 11th years, like, start since I started MMA. Because uh, I just see it as a, a bit of fun. Um, yeah, so, I don't know, I, I would love to be able to train more and commit myself to, you know, to what I should be doing, competing at this level, but bills to pay little one now it's um it's hard to make that commitment of sacrificing work and money to you know train as uh, i'm probably training not as much as i could at the minute but then i'm sacrificing a bit of home life so for the last sort of six years like you said i've sort of been 
competing at a, a good enough level with the amount of training I'm doing. But ideally, I would like to train more. But you know, life life and bills comes first. To be fair. So eleven years, and how did you get into it in the first place? Uh, new gym open where I live. Um, that started teaching MMA, so I used to watch it back in the old days when it was on the old Bravo channel. Um, and then, yeah, I see the gym opening and it's doing. I thought I like watching it. Let's give it a go. And that was it. I've just last eleven years has been all I've done. Sacrifice a lot of you know home life, friends, family, sort of thing, just for, to do what I love doing. It's just like playing Sunday league football for me, so that's why I still enjoy yeah. it and um, <laughs> not getting bored of it really. Well, this is it. It was more a case of ha- keeping that same sort of drive and enthusiasm and like keeping it mixed up and stuff. Yes, because obviously, like it could get quite repetitive having you know a fight camp, or all that grueling training, then a fight, and then the I, I time off, it. and then the re- rinse and repeat. Yeah. Um, like for the Mads Bunnell fight, I really upped my training and stuff and it, like I've said in interviews just after the fight and leading up to the fight it got a bit got a bit too much it sort of took the fun out of it and then obviously with everything that went on it sort of just ugh, took the fun out of it so so what happened with that weight cut then um probably get asked that quite a lot no nah, not really um just five hours weight wouldn't come off it's not, I normally do I normally cut from sort of 70 kilos, 71. I think the fight before Mads, I, I dropped from 72 and a half down to 66, obviously. And I thought, right, yeah, sweet. That's six and a half kilos easy. I woke up weight like the day of the, my weight cut for the Mads fight at 70 kilos. Normally drop everything I need in five hours maximum and i only dropped two kilos in five hours my body would not let go of it i was i borrowed jack's like little sauna tent that i was sitting in i was in there for a half hour up max i was getting out of it bone dry i was in the bath and the towels half hour getting out bone dry just um i couldn't my body would not let go of any water at all so um yeah i got to the wains Knew I was going to come in overweight. I weighed in overweight. I was only two pound overweight, and then two hours, my body started to let go of it, and then just run out of time. Really, ninety grams. It's an expensive ninety grams. I tell you that. I was going to say it's one of them ones. But how did you feel going into that fight after that weight cut, and then the whole stress of not yeah, making I've, it? Obviously, when I. After it all happened, I was like devastated. I couldn't, I didn't make the way. I've done all that effort now. I can't fight for the belt. And then I thought to myself, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about the belt. Beating Mads is more important than a belt. Do you know what I mean? That's a bigger statement than holding the belt. And then I thought everything was fine. Like leading up, like getting to the uh, getting to the venue and everything. I thought I felt fine. All of that lot. And then after the fight when I sort of looked back at it, thinking about how I felt like standing out the back, walking to the cage, standing in the cage across from him. I didn't feel, didn't feel nervous at all. I weren't anxious. I, I literally, it was just like, I was just standing in the gym ready to do it. Bit by normally like I'm ready to go. I've got, you know, those little butterflies, a little tremble in your knees sort of thing. When you hear that, cage door shut I'm like oh crap right uh, why am I doing this right ready to go now and then the bell goes and then walk out and go this had none of that I was just, I was just standing there like oh, I'm just having another fight now even though do you know what I mean you're fighting the best in Europe well this was it though it came across like your composure just seemed like relaxed as normal didn't see yeah. anything you know was was in the any far, far too relaxed looking back it like I said, it just felt like I was just standing in the gym across from a teammate ready to do a bit of sparring. Um, there was no, uh, there, was just, there was just nothing there. I think the whole, the whole fact of missing weight, not being able to fight for the belt, you know, letting people down. Although people say, oh, you haven't let us down, but amount of 
you know effort people have put in for into me and all that sort of stuff and world title fight potentially biggest fight of your life could could change your life and then you know you you miss weight although it's not my fault i've missed weight um i was in best physical everyone says it oh best physical shape of this fight but it was because i trained more than ever um my weight was better than what it normally is but i don't know perhaps something in my diet in my body was didn't want to let go of the water because you know sometimes it can do that um but yeah and then that's just it and then for the perry goodwin going back to weight loss i I was 70 kilos and i dropped it in three baths what do you start at then because you fight at 66 and 70 and seven, seven yeah, on a rare occasion like, depending depending yeah. on the opponent sort of thing and you know that sort of thing but um say six weeks out from a fight on a on a bad one i'll be 76 i'm normally the amount of weeks i am to kilos over 70 kilos so seven six weeks out i'm normally 76 kilos and i'll drop a kilo a week and then day of weigh-ins on my cut um, 70 kilo between 70 and 70 kilos so I always cut four, four to five kilos maximum um, that's it really is and normally it comes off pretty good there's never any issues um, the diet is not super super strict you know I'll still have a little treat here and there depending on how the training's going and stuff I'm not like, like real rigorous because I know what I can and can't do I've been doing the dieting for so long that you know i'm comfortable knowing what i can and can't eat and how much i'm going to drop each week that sort of thing just just one of them things i think just everything built up on top i think i was probably stressed in in my body without knowing it with all the training and stuff and then just just you know everything just went wrong but you live so, on to the well i've had the next one and uh We'll talk about that one in a minute, but you know, it, it's all sport at the end of the day. It's all a bit of fun. That's it. So you mentioned there about having treats from time to time. This is very important. This is very, you know, what is your treat? This is like, you know, the real character defining moment. Go I'm a biscuit man. Simple as that. Ooh, I am a biscuit, I'm a biscuit man. Get home from training. Sometimes <clears throat> one biscuit will turn into half a pack. Um, yeah, I'm a, Which biscuits are we talking? What are we saying? biscuit. Chocolate. Oh. I'm a, I love a chocolate hobnob. Chocolate hobnobs, bourbons, custard creams, fig rolls, anything. I'll, I'll eat them all, even the ones I don't normally eat. If they're there, I'll eat them. <laughs> and if they're not nailed down, they will. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> and then if if I haven't got anything in the cupboard, I'll attack the wife's stash without her knowing it. And then two weeks later, she'll go to eat something and she's like, Where's my chocolate got? I was like, Well, it's been in there for too long now so i hate it. <laughs> that's it got to do we got to yeah do. exactly if it, if it hasn't been eaten within two days of being bought it's a free game well this is it you know what i mean you gotta sit the but yeah I'll, i will eat anything anything sweet so i'm a cake man biscuit man and if there's nothing out of that I'll, i love a bit of toast as well oh, yeah Ooh. i love a bit of toast. I'm, I'm just a food man i was just I was trained as a chef when i left college so yeah, I'm I'm always cooking and baking stuff. That's why we're having the, the bake off. But I might have to pull something out of the bag now because. Uh, cool. So what's your um like meal prep like in camp with like that sort of chef experience? Is it still like boring chicken and rice and stuff? Are you a bit creative? What do you have? Uh, nah, pretty creative to be fair. We, I I make everything myself. Um, for me and the wife sort of thing, and now the little one. I think the only thing prepared in the freezer now is maybe a. A little bag of chips and some bloody and some fish fingers. Everything else is, you know, frozen veg, meat. That's all that's in the freezer is meat and veg. And not meat and veg, meat. Yeah, frozen veg. And then everything cooks fresh. But yeah, we like to mix it up. Um, never just boring fish and rice or something. I might do some, you know, homemade fish goujons or something. Some nice homemade chips. Everything's, everything's cooked fresh. Everything's homemade. Um, the wife gets a bit bored sometimes. She doesn't really tend to eat what I eat. I sort of will pick something and I'll sort of adjust mine to be healthy sort of thing. Maybe cut out the, I'll definitely cut out the pasta when I'm dieting. Um, 
stick to the couscous and that sort of no heavy carbs. Um, but yeah, it's just general, general healthy eating sort of thing, but not boring, plain bit of veg, plain bit of chicken sort of thing. It's always mixed up. You got to just, you know, I mean, otherwise, creative. then it becomes, oh, I'm just eating for the sake of it. I, I, I still enjoy cooking and eating, so I don't, I'm waffling on now. But yeah, <laughs> you get the, you get the okay, yeah. We'll get on to waffles in a bit. That's the next important yeah. part. That's fine. <laughs> but um, what was it? So talk to me after the Mads fight then. So obviously that big moment, you've sort of come up short. Yeah. How did you, de- what's your process then to come back stronger from that point onwards? Like how were you after like the changing room, for example? Um, I was, I weren't disappointed to be fair. Obviously I was disappointed that I lost, but so much to gain from that fight. Do you know what I mean? I took Mads a distance. No one else has done that sort of thing. Um, I think he only took me down once in the fight. Uh, my resting was good. Um, apart from the striking, uh, everything was everything was as it should have been sort of thing. The, the game plan was majority of it was stuck to. Um, I just didn't expect to get punched in the face for 15 minutes. Um, yeah, just... So I... After the fight, um, I was pretty happy out the back sort of thing. We spoke about it. It is what it is. I don't really tend to dwell on things. I'd, I'd done the best I could with how I was at the time. I didn't lose because I did um, I did mistakes sort of thing. I lost because Mads was the better man. Simple as that. I've done, I've done everything I could. Gave everything I could. So I've got nothing but positives to take from the fight. Obviously, I would have liked to give it, giving him a better fight, but you know, that's on a different night. Who knows? I think that's the biggest difference is like, because you did, you actually performed. It wasn't a case of underperforming or silly mistakes yeah. and stuff. I think that's where you can really come from it feeling like you've achieved something from it and got your yeah, experience worth of that he threw, time. He threw, up, he threw one submission up and I, I, I stuffed it straight away. Um, I think he only took me down in the last round, maybe, or I think he might have took me down towards the end of the second and then maybe the last minute of the third. But, you know, he he takes everyone down for fun and then holds them there. Do you know what I mean? He took me down once. I think the one in the second round, I think I got almost straight back up sort of thing. Um, Yeah, who knows? may get to run it back again, but I think he'll be uh, be long gone then. Obviously, he's just signed with... um, Khabib's manager and that sort of thing so I would assume he's you know he's going to be getting back to the UFC now which he should do he deserves to he's he's smashing everyone up um, probably shouldn't have been cut in the first place but you know it's all business to them and uh, he obviously wasn't cutting the mustard for them at the time but who knows well that's it it all gets a bit like political behind the yeah, scenes exactly. and stuff. now without going into too much detail yes. about your following fight from mm. there Talk to me about that fight week from all getting moved around and everything else. How was that that point for you, obviously cutting weight and focusing on the fight in general? How was that um, for you? The only thing I was more thinking about was, you know, whether we, we were going to fight or not. Is it going to get cancelled? I, did, um, I didn't want to start, you know, cutting my diet right down, being real strict, plus the water loading. Um just to get to bloody, you know, Wednesday while I'm travelling up there for them to go, I oh, know the fight's cancelled. So I was a little bit, that's the only thing I was not really concerned about, but I wanted a, a definite answer to cause so I can stop drinking and, you know, start eating and get back to normal. Um, the whole, you know, changing from London to Manchester and is it going to get cancelled sort of thing and no fans and stuff doesn't really, didn't really bother me. I'm not really one to... I don't get excited really about much. I don't really get let things get to me. So I sort of just, until it was definite, I sort of just stuck to what I needed to do and just carried on really as if it was still going to happen. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one of them things that I'm glad I got to fight in the end because um, who knows when we're going to be able to do it again. Well, this is it. So it's getting a bit tricky. Like, are you managing to get a lot of training? In no, I've done nothing since the fight. Absolutely, I've done well. I tell you, I've done six pull-ups in the garden, 
and then I stopped because I couldn't be bothered to do any more. <laughs> Bodybuilding, is it? <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> New career path. So after most fights, I, I normally tend to have three to four weeks off, maybe not fully training sort of thing. I might go to one or two sessions, but in the past, it would be sort of two, three weeks off, maybe let a few injuries and then gradually work back in. But obviously now I've got a little one. It's a bit harder now to, you know, be in training a fight camp mode for six weeks out every night, have the fight and then go straight back out. So the whole, the first four weeks of lockdown is sort of no different to what I normally do. Even if we weren't on lockdown now, it's sort of getting to the point where, you know, it's getting a bit boring now. Well, I should be getting back into, you know, a bit of movement sort of stuff. I keep telling myself I'm going to start running again, but now it's started raining. I don't really want to go out in the rain. So... Well, that's so the roads aren't going anywhere, are they? No, so <laughs> I, I might start easing my way back into a bit of running, drop a bit more weight, drop a bit of weight, but I've got no no plans to, you know, do anything too serious at the moment. So when you've got a fight booked in your camp, how are you structuring it in the sense of like strength conditioning sessions throughout the week versus sparring and all the rest of it? Um, like I said, I don't train enough. I'll do Wednesdays is MMA. Fridays is wrestling, Sundays is um, like the pro team sparring, and then days in between that, depending on how I feel, I go to the gym on my own and just do whatever I feel needs doing at the time, how I'm feeling, you know. That's it. That's why I say I should really train more. I should be shouldn't be competing at the level I'm at. The amount of training I'm doing, I'm training Pacifics twice a week, you know. Most people are doing four or five times a week. So I want to train more, but I just can't. So who knows what level I could be at or where I could be if I was able to train full time. So if there's any sponsors out there, hook me up, yeah. And uh, we can uh, <laughs> get and do some training. <laughs> but take my bills and I go and train and fight for you. Simple as that. Sorted. Yeah, I was going to ask about your um, like wrestling background because obviously in your fights you're quite wrestling heavy. Like if you take the Chase Morton fight for example. Yeah, is that how long like... he is? I, I had well, no yeah. thought it was either get <laughs> taken down or bloody get kicked in the face. I wasn't disagreeing with it. It worked. Yeah, it, but... work, mate. it was they more like bloody good was... takedowns as well. <laughs> That's. I mean, is your training like always been like quite wrestling focused, or is it just the way your game's naturally developed? I think it's just the way my game's naturally developed. Um, like amateur days, it would be literally to someone, you know, back in the old, back in when I was an amateur, it weren't really sort of the, the amateurs then, but nothing like the amateurs now. The amateurs now are like pros, do you know what I mean? They train better than most, well, I'm a professional and a lot of them train better than me. So the level back then was different. So I would normally get rushed quite a lot on the striking and it would literally just be big double legs. That's all, go back to pretty much all of my fights. I think Chase Morton was the last professional fight that I hit one of my sort of real big takedowns. But I think every single fight before that, from almost my amateurs to all my pros, I've always hit one of the, my big doubles, pretty much one of my, used to be my signature takedown. Um, so I think it naturally just progressed from that. And obviously Jack, Jack Mason, head coach now, he's obviously... The wrestling base sort of thing, get the takedown, you know, lots of ground and pound, got a quality wrestling coach. I think it naturally just progressed to, to, along those lines, you know, do the striking when that don't work, hit the takedown, you know, and then a bit of ground and pounds from there. So I've, I didn't start, like when I started the MMA, I didn't have a background in anything. So I haven't come from anything. I think you'd naturally just progress to grab someone, take them down and, you know, just just went from there and it, it seems to work and just naturally my go-to sort of fighting style. Well, yeah, it seems to work really naturally. And also with the Chase Morton yes. fight, that was in a ring. How did you find training for that then? Did you know in advance you'd be in, no. the, in the ring? Instead no, of the I didn't. I'm trying. I don't think, no, I think I found out on the day it was going to be in a ring, which didn't really bother me because um, about an old show called Ringmasters, like in Kent, was like a, a K1 MMA sort of tournament based like event on all in one day, and that used to be in a 
boxing ring. Um, so I didn't really have an issue with it. The only, but during the fight, the the mat was like a real, like a proper canvas mat, like fabric canvas. And obviously, where I was taking him down, I I burnt both my knees real bad. Uh, all my toes were all burnt. Um, my knees and my toes got infected after after the fight. While I was I was on holiday, I think mm. the following week. Um, and yeah, my knees, my knees and everything were just swollen from just that the, that canvas ring. It was absolutely disgusting. It hurt so much as well. Every time I took him down, I was on my knees moving. It was just like just carpet burn went on no flesh at all. It was just like straight down. It, was, it hurt so much. Never again. Oh, yeah, man. never, That's never again. <laughs> Oh fuck that! Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't advise it. I've still got scars from it. It's not nice at all. So, regards of like sort of wars you've been in and stuff, how much has that affected you during the fight? Because obviously, with the adrenaline and everything else, like I don't know, take the Ricky Sav- Savaraja yeah. fight when, with your nose and stuff. Did you? No, it's a direct effect when that happened, or is it like an after that, the fact thing? That fight is the first time I've ever had a nosebleed. Um, it was funny because before that, in pretty much all of my fights, I've I've never I've never really taken hardly any damage. I rarely I, I rarely got hit, um, and I think it was I think the day of that fight when I was driving to London, I think I was talking to the boys in the car and I was saying like I never I never get hit, so it's not a problem sort of thing. Um, and then obviously I get my nose broke. Uh, yeah, that's the that's the that's uh, the first time I've had my nose broke, and that's the one thing I've always dreaded from when I started. Uh, I don't want to I don't want to get my nose broke. Um, it wasn't too bad, to be fair. But I think he he put it back into place for me because that's nice. Yeah, because like in some of the pictures in the fight, if I think one of them when I'm looking like the camera's on me and all my blood, and I've got my mouth open, my nose is wonky, and then. I remember holding him against the cage and he was giving me little rabbit punches and they were hitting me in the nose. And then after the fight, um, obviously my nose was straight. And then when I compare the pictures, like halfway through the fight when he broke my nose and at the end, my nose goes from uh, crooked to straight. So he definitely broke it and then straightened it up for me, <laughs> which is very nice. Like, Do very you remember nice what, was, um, what was said in the corner? I think it was the second round because when you came out and finished him in yeah. the third... You seem to almost change entirely your style and your sort of stance. Uh, yeah, do you know what? I watched that fight back the other week because I see Rick at the... When did I see Rick, actually? I see him in Colchester at the Cage Rose Academy show. I think it was in October. Um, and then after that, I went back and watched the fight. Uh, and, yeah, when he bro- one, one, as soon as he broke my nose, you could see I went onto the back foot... Um, Obviously, I've never taken damage like that before, so it was a little bit off-putting. It took me straight out of my game. And then, I don't know, and then third round, like you said, I come straight out, and it was like I just started the first round again. I was putting the pressure back on him, and then, luckily for me, I faked the takedown, hit that right hand, and and dropped him. So, who knows? It could have been a, could have been a lot closer fight if I hadn't have done that because, you know, my nose was busted. He was obviously had it, starting to get his confidence. His, you could see in his striking, his confidence was building. His, he was hands down, you know. Um, so yeah, it was it was a good fight. To be fair, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it looked like a really good yes. fight as well. When I was chatting to him, he asked me to ask you what your game plan was, like going into that, because he was expecting like a takedown. Uh, and obviously, you did see one. Yeah, no, um, it was literally game plan was just pressure. Which is pretty much all all my game plans for most of my fights is just take centre and just press people back. Um, uh, yeah, that was that was the game plan for that fight. Walk him down, keep him against cage. I think it was to get the takedown, but I don't think I, I didn't need to because my striking was working. Sort of thing. The only time I started shooting for a takedown was when as soon as he broke hit me, I shot. Then I think I went again for another shot. Um, but yeah, it was just to walk him down, keep the pressure, and just sort of pick him off with the leg kicks. 
Now, with all your time you've been training and competing, have you got like a fight day sort of routine, like a ritual you sort of go through or any sort of habits um, like that? No. Just, just wake up, spend time with my wife, have breakfast sort of thing. Check my bag about four times to make sure I've got everything packed. And then when I get in the car, I, I double I check again just to make sure. Um, but yeah, no, no sort of specific habits um, that I must do. It's just sort of check the bag, prep me dinner, prep me lunch, prep me food to eat just before the fight, um, and just make sure I've literally got everything. Because uh, George, one of our teammates at the Cage Warriors Academy show, he's warming up out the back. He's had to borrow a teammate's cup because he forgot his, and then. He left his gum shield at the bloody hotel and then one of our teammates luckily was at the hotel in the room that they stayed in and he got to the venue as George was walking out onto out to the cage with his gum shield it's just it was just ridiculous we were like how can you how can you forget your gum shield do you know what I mean so I was taking piss out of him at the as I left for the Perry Goodwin fight I was like has anyone can can, they, can anyone bring me a gum shield? I've left mine at home. <laughs> you know, just, uh, just ribbing him. But yeah, just triple check everything. Now, I talked about those shorts because you seem to have like got almost a statement now. It's like an almost um, association of you and the um, camo shorts. Well, that's, How did yeah, that come well, about? I used to have those star shorts, which I wore for quite a lot of fights. And then um, I'm trying to... F- and then I, I, I had my fight against Paul McBain at the O2, and then I lost. And then after that, I was like, ah, oh. because I, I had the, the, those shorts originally were like um, like compression uh, bottoms for like sparring on spats, but they were a bit small in the legs, so I chopped them and uh, sewed them up myself. So I, I've always liked them, the pattern, and then I. Because I lost that fight, I was like, oh, should I change my shorts? I'm not really like superstitious or anything like that. I need these shorts, they're my fight shorts. But once I've got something and I like it, I sort of tend to stick stick with it. Um, so, yeah, and I think they look cool. I, no one else really wears them. So people obviously recognise them now but when I when I wear them sort of thing. So that's the only reason why. There's no, no real um, reason behind them other than just I liked them and... Uh, that's it, really. But who knows? I've, I've lost. I've just. I've lost my last two fights now. So perhaps it's down to the shorts. I might have to change. Go back to the stars. Or might, might have to get some other wacky ones. Get some leggings. There yeah. you go. You're right. <laughs> so outside of um, MMA, would you ever do any competitions in like grappling, maybe in the gi, or wrestling? It's not that I wouldn't. It's just when I'm not doing MMA, I sort of. Uh, I sort of stay away from it and I get sidetracked. I sort of tend to do other stuff. I spend time with my wife and now my little one. Obviously not as much as what she would probably like. And she's sitting next to me smiling now. Um, <laughs> so yeah, if I'm not doing MMA and I'm not with my wife, I'm normally in my shed, tinker with a motorbike and then I, I might... <laughs> it's, it's pretty... Yeah, buying other... To- she would call it for the motorbike, going out on my motorbike. Um. Yeah, nothing. Nothing. To, I w- yeah, I would. I'd like to do a wrestling comp to see what wrestling's like, but I don't train enough in a gi or no gi to be going into a competition, and it doesn't really excite me. To be fair, no. Uh, just I don't know. It's just some. Just doesn't excite me. It's not not for me. It's probably why I don't train enough of it. Just sort of tend to stick to what I'm good at, which isn't good. Like I said, at this level, I need to... I'm, I'm, I've, I've, found, I've only ever hit one one a fight by one submission in, in my whole 11 years. Not because I can't do it. I just... It's just never come around to it. I don't go hunting for them or anything like that. It's just... I don't know. Maybe if I was a bit more skilled in that area, it might be a bit more sort of dangerous. But who knows? Everything's working at the minute. So, but yeah, I, I don't Definitely. know. If I was if I was offered one, I might do it, but I'm not going to pay to do one. That's for sure. 
yeah they're certainly yeah. um quite, quite dear for what they are as yeah. well um who's your anyone you're looking up for your next opponent anything in talks no i, I was thinking i was thinking the other day actually uh what what are we doing but i want to i want to rematch very good win to be fair because I, I still I feel I still feel I won that fight. I've watched it back three or four times. And I can see what, you know, some of the people are saying oh he, he they can you can see why I didn't win, but I can't I can't see it at all. Although they're saying, Oh yeah, he, he got five takedowns but Perry got straight back up. But I've still changed the dynamic of the fight. I'm still the one being aggressive. I'm you know, taking the centre of the cage. Um, ugh, do you know what I mean? It's one of them things. It's so... It's what I've been uh, trying to say to people. Ah, oh, you got robbed. And I'm like, yeah, I feel I do. But it is, it's complicated score. And I'd like to see the scorecards. But I feel Perry won the first minute, minute and a half, maybe. Just not through the fact that anything landed or he caused me damage. Just the fact he was throwing more. He looked more aggressive because, you know, he was in and out. He was throwing hard, fast shots sort of thing. And I was sort of just walking him down, taking my time. But, yeah, I, I, I'd like to fight Perry Goodwin again, to be fair. I mean, this is the beauty and the tricky side of the whole judging and whole MMA being the spectrum it is of everything being different applications, different way of viewing things, different perspectives. Yeah. Would you like to see a more rigid scoring system, as in broken down to more elements, like the striking specifically, wrestling, cage work, or would you like it as it is almost? Uh, honestly, I couldn't say, but uh, I just I can't see how you, I can't see how Perry won that third round. I really can't. I say I say he won the first say minute and a half just through what I said, um, but then I rocked him with two right hands and. Surely my two right significant shots, which have rocked him, outweigh his sort of ten or fifteen unsignificant shots. My, I landed more damaging leg kicks. I hit five. I think I hit five takedowns in the last round. Although he didn't stay down for very long, they're still like I said. They're still impact. They weren't like little trips. They were big impact, impactful takedowns. Um, I controlled him against the cage. The takedowns, the aggression, the leg kicks. I don't see how all of my sort of... And then he come back strong in the last, say, 30 seconds after I took him down again. Um, swinging at me again, nothing landed on gloves. So, again, he, he looked aggressive and for the last 30 seconds. But that's because, you know, he, he came on strong to try and, you know, knock me out. But he's, say minute and a half of work cannot how I don't see how that can outweigh my three minutes of sig better significant shots, takedowns, all of that lot. Yeah. How did this fight come about in the first place? Is it something your team sought after? Because the move up to seventy opposed to your natural sixty six. Um right so seems a bit of an unusual move. Me and my teammate Emra were supposed to, like we were due to fight and then they offered Lewis Monarch to me. And I think well yeah, I think they offered me Lewis Monarch. Lewis Monarch, I think, turned it down. And then they offered me Perry Goodwin. I'll say yes to anyone. It doesn't, doesn't bother me. Um, and obviously, Perry took the fight as well. Um, and also, it's a bit... The day of... I'm trying to think now. I think it was day before weigh-ins. So, no, not day before Wednesday. I was at home. So, this was the, I think, Tuesday night. I got a phone call from Jack. They wanted to, um, they, ba uh, they basically wanted to cancel my fight with Perry because, um, because obviously Morgan Charrier's opponent couldn't make it into the country with all the corona and stuff. They wanted to put Perry forward for the, to face him for the interim belt because obviously Perry's on a, a one win I was on a loss so to them it made sense to put Perry up for the fight rather than me even though I've just you know I've just fought for the title took in the distance sort of thing but 
I was so close to making like I want a statement, make the championship weight, which I did easily. So that's Morgan's fight obviously got they couldn't find him anywhere else and me and Perry got carried on and it obviously it was a good fight, so good for them really. So, yeah, that's the only reason I just got offered Perry Goodwin. No, that, there, there, that's there, fair no one, there was no one else for me to fight. Do you know what I mean? I think Perry so, Perry was the only person in the division, I think, that has fought in the division before with a, the, with a win. I've beaten everyone else, sort of thing. So it made sense to fight him. But who they're going to get and put me up against now is weird. Oh, they wanted, yeah, that's what they were going to do. Sorry. They wanted, to, they were going to do Perry Goodwin versus Morgan Cherrier for the title. And they want, and they wanted me to fight Jordan Vuknic at lightweight. That's what they wanted to do for Manchester. But we said no to the Vuknic fight because I was already at like 68 and a half kilos. And they wanted me to fight him at lightweight. So it made, that made no sense for me. So, yeah, the Perry Goodwin fight went ahead. Yeah, and I trained with Jordan as well. And that'd be another one of my friends you would have fought. <laughs> <laughs> perhaps, perhaps that fight should have come ahead then because I, I might have won since I win against all your friends oh <laughs> there we are <laughs> cool man so, um, thank you for coming on today is anyone you want to shout out before you um, head off uh, yeah just all my sponsors um, you know they, they, all, they all everyone you know helps me out um, as much as I can I've got uh, my chiropractors MGM clinics MGM Grand Clinics, sorry, not MGM Grand, MGM Clinics. Um, <laughs> that's where I find it. <laughs> uh, we've got Mike Ashton Roofing, we've got um, VC Cook Limited, a waste management company, we've got uh, Whip Street Motors, we've got Raw CBD, um, Sweeney Dodge Fightwear, you know, just everyone, everyone at BKK sort of thing, and, you know, everyone that follows me sort of thing. I'm, pretty quiet on all my Instagrams and stuff just you know it's just I do as much as I can and what I can be bothered to do it's not ideal but you know just everyone that's you know giving me shout outs vote messages of support and all that sort of stuff um, my wife for putting up for me <laughs> she's over there so I've got to say um, but yeah that's it mate just all the usual perfect cheers um, guys for coming on mate stay you. safe and cheers, all the best mate. Bye -bye. and this episode is sponsored by Mora MMA Use code FCMMA20 at checkout to get 20% off on all molar attire and gloves.